All right, Balancers, today I'm joined by someone who keeps me very entertained online and I'm very excited to get to know her behind the scenes. She's the host and founder of the Catamania podcast. She's also co-founded a law firm with her husband and uh, somehow wrapped up in all of that on the side of all these day jobs. She's also a comedian, keeps us all very entertained online. I'm very honored to have Christina Cataman on the podcast today. So Christina, a warm welcome. Thank you so much, Erica. I'm really excited to be here. I'm very excited to chat to you today. I want to just start with the obvious question of how you know different your passions or I guess the things that you're doing are. It's something I really admire. I mean, me, myself, I'm, I'm a lawyer. I have an e-commerce business and I have the podcast, which I also tend to think is quite random. Um, but, but what I appreciate about it, having so many different avenues myself, is You've given yourself permission to explore all these different parts of you. And so many people listening have this looming question or, um, you know, they're, they're always saying to me, like, I want to have a side hustle. I want to I, I want to have more hobbies, but I don't know what those are. And I think sometimes we box ourselves into I'm a teacher, I'm a lawyer, and we identify ourselves as that thing. So I guess my starting question for you is how did you come to have this well-rounded I guess, life experience and, and, and have like different avenues where you can explore yourself. Can you share just how all of them came about? That's such a great question. And that definitely was not the case for a long time. I moved to Canada when I was almost 17 years old. And I pretty much like right away had to jump into, you know, school, work. And I was here by myself. So I didn't really have I didn't give myself permission for a long period of time to do what I really loved. I just kind of, you know, followed the path of like, well, money and security. I have to make sure that I earn a good living because how am I going to survive? I'm here by myself. I don't have a safety net. I need to make sure that whatever it is that I'm doing brings me income, brings me security. I ended up down the path of a career that out of all careers that exist out there for me, it was actually pretty pretty nice. Like I, I kind of enjoyed doing what I did um, in the corporate world. I learned to kind of love the corporate culture too. Maybe it's because of the company that I worked for was really good and they treated me nicely. And, you know, it, all in all, I would say it was a pretty, pretty good experience. You know, like I, I obviously always felt like, okay, maybe I should, you know, start something on the side or maybe I should do something um, with my hobbies but I never had like that, oh my gosh, I hate this job. I absolutely hate going to work. Um, I was fortunate enough. I, I've had that before, you know, the last company that I work for. Um, but the, the last company I would say was a pretty good experience. But so when it comes to starting something on the side, how it happened for me was um, in Canada, we had, depending on the province, but all in all, we had like what felt 300 lockdowns. They kept us you know, from time to time, they would lock us in, then they would say, you know, okay, you can go out now and then lock down and then, you know, not to get too much into it. But during like the, I think the second or third round of lockdowns, I was getting really concerned about people's mental health and my own mental health, because it just seemed like there was no way out of it. And that this is going to keep going forever. And so I turned to humor. I was like, okay, I need to entertain myself somehow. And then I remembered something that I loved doing when I was very young, when there was like no limitations on what you could do for a living, when you don't have that set of like, well, how am I going to make money or how am I, you know, I really loved being on stage. I really loved entertaining people. I used to dance. Um, I used to sing and I really loved that. So I was like, okay, Obviously, I can't just out of nowhere start singing or dancing. Everybody's locked down. <laughs> but there's social media. And maybe I could just like try to do something with that. Maybe I, I could try to entertain people that way. And I just started coming up with these like ideas, primarily comparing like West versus, you know, Slavic culture, or, like American versus uh, Russian or ex-USSR. And I posted a couple of videos and they started blowing up because I guess people just found them relatable, found them funny. And I was like, wow, this is this is kind of cool. I definitely never thought of myself as like a comedian or someone who would be going down that path. I still can't really imagine myself doing a stand-up maybe one day, but I kind of, I guess, looked at what I used to love doing when I was little and 
distanced myself from that identity of like, okay, well, this is what I do for a living. This is who I am. It's like, yes, this is what I do for a living for, for money. And this is my career path right now. But what else do I like to do? What else did I like to do when I was really young? How can I maybe go back to that and apply it into my day-to-day life now? So that's kind of how it all started. Yeah, I think that's awesome. And I guess the mentality or the approach of turning to when we were younger, before we had any limiting beliefs, before we even knew what self-doubt was, when we you know, gave ourselves permission to dream and just do all these things, it's so interesting how telling that period of our life can be for things when we're older. And it's that almost like we lose that permission to play when we get older, uh, to have fun, to just do things without thinking too much about them. Um, And and I think for anyone listening who is feeling like they really wish they had something else just for themselves, something else to connect to that made them feel kind of whole or just like more humanly or more in touch with themselves, I think reverting back to what you used to love, you know, even in primary school, it is a great starting place. And then just experimenting from there, like you said, like you don't know if you're going to be a comedian, you just kind of started your social media off a hunch and I guess it's now created this community who is now going to connect with you through the podcast medium. So it's really interesting to see like the flow of everything. But but on more on the side of your podcast, I I know it's more kind of in the self exploration side. Your your title being nobody knows what's going on. Let's figure it out together. What actually then prompted you to start that? So during lockdown, you had this kind of uh, you were drawn to using humor to entertain yourself and others, which I think is a beautiful way to create connection. How did that then roll over into the podcast? And I ask this specifically because I know there are quite a few listeners who I've spoken to directly who want to start a podcast and have been putting it off and putting it off. So I just want to know, I guess, what gave you that push to want to start it? And what was the process like for you actually doing it? Absolutely. So first of all, for those who are listening, who are like, oh, I've been putting it off and putting it off. Look at these two. How did they do it? You know, I put it off for probably about like a year, almost two years. I can't remember now, but the idea to start a podcast came to me a while back. And I even recorded an intro, which I just did like on my phone. I literally got my husband to like film me um, recording the intro because I just knew that I really love talking to people and I, and I asked myself kind of like, okay, how can I, how can I do this, this, this thing, this talking to people, this love that I have for people, how can I transition it to something that could bring value to the world? You know? And I thought, okay, well in this day and age, podcasting is a big thing. People love podcasts because it's so real, right? We're having a real time conversation. People listen to it and they get to know us through this conversation and, you Mm -hmm. know, real raw information that we're sharing with one another. So, you know, I, (laughs) excuse me, recorded the intro video and then I was like, okay, but I'm not ready though. I don't really have the right equipment. Who am I even going to invite? And that was before I, really had any like major social media involvement. So I kept putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And then even after starting the social media channels and, you know, doing some stuff there and gaining some followers, I was like, okay, but I'm still not ready. I'm still not ready. And the truth about it is that even when I started my podcast, I wasn't ready. I had a microphone, a pretty decent microphone, which I'm still using. Actually, it's quite a decent microphone. Um, But I didn't have a laptop. Like I was, I had my work laptop. I had an iPad. So I recorded the first couple of episodes. And then I realized that my iPad can't handle the episodes, the editing. So I was like, okay, this is going well. However, I started the podcast, you know, even even though there was not really, you know, a seamless process yet, or I couldn't actually execute the editing part of it, I executed the podcast. So my advice to someone who's listening to this and thinking about starting a podcast, but you feel like you're not ready, just start, literally just start, reach out to someone you want to talk to. Um, you know, there's only so much research you can do about what software you can use because that's what I used to. I was like, well, what software? I don't know. I don't know where to begin. I don't know what to do. Just do it. Just literally pick one thing and then you can perfect it along the way. It's never going to be perfect, but you can perfect it along the way. You know, the first episode or the second episode is going to be better than the first one. And then the third is going to be better than the second. And then you're just going to improve along the way. So that's kind of how it came about. My podcast is not really, like you were saying, it's not really 
necessarily related to my comedy. It's more so in like the self-help space. Um, and it also came from, you know, this idea that nobody knows what's going on. It's true. I, I just felt like even the people who you we look up to the most, they figured it out in the certain area that they're working in or whatever it is that they're doing in their life, but they also had to figure it out, you know? So <laughs> nobody really at any given point in time knows exactly what's going on. We just learn along the way. And the idea for this podcast and the kind of the slogan that I have is to talk to people who seem to have it figured out in certain areas of expertise and see how they figured it out just for mm -hmm. them to share their knowledge and for them to, um, you know, share their wisdom, I guess, with the rest of us. So yeah, yeah. that's kind of how yeah, it all started. That's awesome. And, and very humbling to hear, um, having interviewed so many people, you'd be surprised how many people say the same thing about uh, not feeling prepared enough to start. And I just want to pull this comment or this idea back away from even just a podcast because a lot of people listening will have set goals for 2023 and be currently putting them off because, you know, they don't feel ready to start it. I was the same probably six months uh, I pushed my podcast back because, you know, I'm not an editor so I had to learn how to do editing and I had to learn and, you know, what equipment to use really it's it's quite simple you need a, a mic and a computer and you figure the rest out and and one thing i want to say irrespective whether it's you know a first podcast episode or um, the first time you go to the gym or the first day on the job it's it's never going to compare to where you want to take it right so if you're starting something and it's for the longevity of your life say something for your health or if you're starting a podcast and you wanted to see where it goes it's inevitably going to be better in a year's time. Like you want it to be better. You want to grow into whatever activity or journey you're going on. And so having that apprehension because you're not prepared enough uh, is, is almost this false barrier we create for ourselves. I mean, there is no YouTube video or textbook I could have read for, you know, the times where I thought I was recording and I didn't or the times where, uh, you know, you just put typos in the caption or whatever it is, like all these little mishaps that happen along the way, like it's not stuff you can learn or prepare for. So I, I couldn't agree more and I really hate that advice to just get started. Uh, but, but I think that that false barrier is so crippling uh, and, and something that really prevents us from getting started. I'm curious to know that because I think that's one part of kind of pushing back our our ventures or our goals or things we want to do. I think another part is almost this side sub self-doubt. I'd be curious to know if you've kind of felt that in and amongst, I mean, having a big personality on social media, I, I just wonder, is that something you felt particularly moving into something more lateral, like on the side, like your podcasting, is that something you felt as a hurdle at all? Or if it's something you felt in the past um, and how you kind of navigated that? Yeah, for sure. I think self-doubt is mm, kind of almost inevitable for many of us. Like you definitely feel and, you know, even being on social media, especially with, you know, everybody has an opinion on social media that you don't ask for, but they are, you know, inclined <laughs> to tell you. Um, and unsolicited advice. <laughs> unsolicited advice. Exactly. Uh, definitely. And actually, to bring back, I just wanted to comment on something you were saying, you know, you were no textbook or no video that you could have read to prepare you for certain things that you experienced when you started a podcast. I remember during my first episode, I couldn't record it because my electricity kept shutting, shutting off, like randomly, oh. my electricity kept shutting off. So I was like, definitely nobody prepared me for this. You know, I, w I was having these <laughs> snippets from the episode, but my electricity kept shutting off. And I was like, what am I going to do now? There's like five minutes here, five minutes there, five minutes, like, oh my gosh, this is, what do I do? You know, and there was no answer on the internet as to what, what I need to do. I ended up re-recording the episode, but yeah, just to comment on that point that you, you aren't going to be prepared for <laughs> most of the things you're going to experience, but you're going to learn and you're going to, that's the only way to do it. Right. Yeah. Uh, and just to, to yeah. Sorry, I have to share just one quick story on that note. It's it's like this is something you think you hear that like never happens. We had a customer, uh, I've got an e-commerce business and we sell like fitness uh, resistance bands, sweat towels, things like that. I got a customer care email and there was photo proof, right? 
the the postman delivered my package and my dog has eaten the parcel and like ripped the whole thing to shreds. It's kind of like a miss my dog, the dog ate my homework type thing. Like I thought, mm-hmm. I honestly would have thought this person's just trying to like scare me for another product if they hadn't included the photo. But like you were saying, like no, nothing can prepare you for something like that. So I just wanted to share because that's also something so random um, that, you know, if you think like you're waiting to learn all those things before you start, it's never, you'll be waiting forever and you'll just never start, you know? Exactly. Exactly. And then you're going to regret it in the end. How many times exactly. have you met people who are like, oh, I wanted to start this, you know, when I was in my twenties or thirties, but you know, I didn't. And it's like, there's, you, you don't, that's my biggest thing. It's like, I don't want to regret anything or regret not starting anything. Yeah. To bring back to your question, um, the biggest thing that I used to tell myself um, before starting the podcast was, well, English is not my first language. Like what if I say really? something that makes no I sense? Wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know. I haven't even noticed. Exactly. See? And I kept telling myself like, oh my gosh, but English is not my first language. So how am I going to like, what if I say something that makes no sense? What if, and then I'm like, so what if I say something that makes no sense? It doesn't matter. You'll correct yourself and then say something that makes sense. Who cares, right? And then, of course, you know, the the messages of like, well, like, who's going to even – who's going to want to listen to it? Like, who's going to want to listen to Classy. a podcast? <laughs> and it's like there's people who actually really love listening to you. Believe it or not, there are people who love your energy. They love your messages. They love – you know, something about you, they're drawn to you, they're, they're going to listen to the podcast. And I think the biggest thing is also approaching it when you have that self-doubt and you allow it to really get into your head and you approach, you know, if I approached Catamania from the lens of like that, because self-doubt is just fear, right? You're, you're, you're fearing Mm -hmm. what either others will say about you or, um, you you have a fear of something, fear that you're not good enough. So if I approach catamania with the lens of self-doubt, I am then basically thinking about myself. Like if if you and I are recording this episode and we're both really fearful and we're, you know, we're la- we we doubt ourselves too much, we're approaching it from a lens of ourself. Like we're thinking about ourselves too much. Whereas if you approach it from a place of service, it's like, hey, this I want this episode to bring some value to somebody in the world. Um, mm-hmm. I want for whoever you know is listening to this podcast to hear something and be like, whoa, this is inspiring, or this is this is super educational. I like this. I you know, if we approach it from a lens of service, your self doubt goes away because you don't think about yourself Mm -hmm. anymore. You think about, hey, how can I bring value to somebody who's listening to me? And then it's like it doesn't matter what my doubts are or my fears are, I'm just going to go for it. And it helps, you know? Yeah. I think, I think that's a really powerful reframe and almost reminds me of uh, maybe when we're egocentric, where we're coming from our ego of what others will think and and fear of judgment and all those things. Um, They're all external concerns, but if you dial back the noise and, and, and really tune in to yourself, that's when you can hear like, well, what's my mission? What's my why? Um, it's obviously, easier said than done and at times really challenging to to tune out the external noise but on this note you posted a kind of like a 2022 recap right and you were posting like a couple of the things you'd learned one of them particularly stood out to me and I think is quite relevant to what we're talking about now and it, it read the moment you quit letting other people's opinions stop you from doing you your life will begin uh, mm-hmm. I, I think this is very powerful but I think in substance it's sometimes so difficult to tune out other people's opinions. I remember reading this quote. It's like sometimes it's not even what we think about ourselves. It's not what they think about us. It's what we think they're thinking about us. So sometimes that's so far from the reality, right? We conflate other people's judgments so much in our head when, I mean, I'm sure you know this, like everyone's focus is their own life. And we put so much emphasis sometimes on thinking that other people care so much about our every little move, our every little mistake. And that is really like debilitating. Um, but, but I think this quote really emphasizes that when you detach from that, it just lets you do you, it lets you live your life. So I just want to ask, have you kind of had moments in the past where you've been tangled up in that fear of other people's judgments and how did you kind of work through and, and break free from it? Because even me personally, it's something I struggle with from time to time and have to really just re myself, but I just really wanted to get your thoughts on it. 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's inevitable that all of us kind of suffer from it unless you're either really good at it and there's a really fine line. Unless you're either really good at tuning it out or honestly you're a psychopath because like psychopaths <laughs> don't care about what other people think of us. So I think that's the first thing that made me kind of, you know, rethink and reframe that whole thing. So I think what we need to realize is it's kind of natural to think of what other people think about us or to care to a degree, to a degree, mm -hmm. that's the key word here, mm -hmm. because we're social creatures, right? We are Wide meant for the to, mm -hmm. exactly, we, we want to be loved, we want to be understood, we want to be, you know, part of, of a group or a society, it's, it's normal, it would be concerning if we absolutely did not have any, you know, regard for what others feel or say or think. With that being said, a lot of people's opinions are just noise. And a lot of times people just really, you know, care too much about other people's businesses or about other people's lives for no reason, just, just for, you know, maybe their life lacks something or um, they're just very critical of themselves and of others. So I think it becomes a problem when we prevent other people's opinions from allowing us to do what we are meant mm -hmm. to do. Yeah. And I think recognizing that is really important because I I personally don't think I can ever completely tune out that like, oh, well, what are others going to think? But I can recognize that, hey, I'm caring too much about that right now. And I shouldn't be caring too much about it because some people are going to love what I do. Some people are going to hate what I do. It's normal. It means you're doing something of value in the world if you're if you're being criticized, really, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I think the important thing for me was to just kind of recognize that and realize that if I am being or if I allow myself to let it get to me too much and let it prevent me from, you know, posting a video that I know is going to entertain millions of people uh, or, you know, inviting someone on my podcast who I know is going to provide a lot of value, but maybe some of their opinions people are going to disagree with. That's fine. And the other thing is also you have a fear usually when you care about what other people say or think. You have like that fear of like, oh, I wonder what they'll say. I wonder what they'll do. And my motto is if it scares you, you should do it. Like if something is scaring you and you're like, hmm, I wonder if, I, w I wonder, should I do it? Like I, I have a feeling that I should, should, should do it, should say it, but I don't know. Do it. Like do it before your reasoning mind kicks in and convinces you not to because otherwise you will allow other people's opinions to prevent you from doing it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like taking that uh, immediate action when you get that, the feeling or calling to do something. But I love this. I love your input on this because it's this permission um, and acknowledgement that it's a natural part of humans. I mean, so many times I, I fall into that in that headspace of I shouldn't be caring, you know, like why is it, why is it bothering me so much what X person said or what they thought? Um, I, I think definitely there's a degree to have that self-awareness of, okay, when is it noise and, mm -hmm. and when is it acting like a barrier in my life? And, and the reason I wanted to ask you about this, I mean, we haven't gone into it too much yet, but uh, all the listeners know that the whole concept of balance on this podcast is to really own your own time and spend it how you like in each of the areas of your life. And to because I've, I went through a phase where I was feeling so guilty for how I was or wasn't spending my time. And a lot of that was because of external noise telling me I should be doing more with my family or my friends or, the, or less of, less at work or whatever it was, right? It was, it was the furthest thing from standing in my own time. And I therefore felt constantly out of whack with my sense of life balance. And life balance isn't this picture perfect. Your health has to be the same as your relationships and everything has to be equal. I hate that concept because it doesn't allow for the nuances of life. It's more what do you want, what's important to you, what do you want to prioritize, and your balance should kind of help you cushion pad around that. But this concept of external noise I think contributes to so many people's sense of guilt for how they spend their time or not. So I think just the baseline of giving people the permission, I mean, I always like to take actionable steps away from what people say, otherwise they remain these like concepts we talk about and everyone's like, oh, that was a good idea, but how do I actually apply it? So just from what you said, I'm going to give everyone two steps. The first is just give yourself that little hug, that little okay, and be like, you know what, it's fine, I'm meant to care what other people think, I'm hardwired that way. 
It's a very simple acceptance piece. And then the second is to just ask yourself, is it just noise? Can I just move on from it? You know, is it noise that I can just get on with my day eventually? Or is it actually preventing me from doing something? And then obviously there are so many um, other factors that come in if it is if it is acting like a barrier for you, like maybe it's hitting on a limiting belief you've got or maybe there's some truth in what they've said that is something you want to acknowledge or, or you know, reflect on yourself. Um, but, but no, I really love that and I think it's something we naturally all experience um, and, and as a byproduct of starting something new, it's evidently going to come up from time to time. Like you said, if you're, if you're giving something of value to the world, you're going to create some sort of divide. Some people are going to love it. Some people are not. If I learned anything last year, it's that you can't please anyone and you will spend your whole life trying to, and it probably will never happen. It's one of those things where like, even if you don't do anything, people have something to say. So you may as well just do what you want, right? (laughs) Exactly. That's exactly it. I've always said that. It's like, you are going to get criticized no matter what it is that you do. Even if you are absolutely, you know, not doing anything in public Someone at your work is probably going to look at you and criticize you for something. You can't let that stop you from following what it is that you're meant to follow. And mm-hmm. it's really your intuition will tell you what you're meant to follow. You know, you're you will you will have a feeling about it. Mm-hmm. And if you if you have a feeling that you should do something and then you're like, well, but I wonder if like people will understand or people will believe or people will like me don't because somebody's not going to like you. And then there are a lot of people who are going to like you. And that's, that's just how it goes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I got that intuitive kick, shall we say, to start the podcast. And it was one of these moments where someone said it to me, they were like, you'd be a really good podcast host. And mind you, I didn't really listen to podcasts at the time. It was just like this sense of calm that came over me. I had no self-doubt. I felt like yeah, maybe I should. And it just felt like organic and and Mm -hmm. really, really natural to me. Um, Do you, do you feel like that's sort of how you kind of operate and like act on your hunches as well? Like, do you kind of have things you do to stay very connected to your intuition? Like, do you kind of have those experiences that lead you through life? A hundred percent. I would say, especially in the last like three years, Everything, every decision that I've made was 100% based on intuition. And what I do is two things. Number one, if I'm not sure about something, I'll meditate on it. Like I'll just relax, calm myself down, try to calm my mind down, which is very difficult, but it can be done. (laughs) Try is the key word. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Try, yeah. Calm my mind down and just... I mean, I'm, I believe in God. And so I, you know, I ask God, whatever you want to call that power, God, universe, higher power, um, to kind of give me an answer. And usually for me, the answer comes in the form of a feeling. So I will feel either good about doing something or I'll feel bad about doing something or not bad, but just there will be some kind of like uneasy feeling about it. Mm. And I actually had um, an intuition expert on my podcast, Sheila V, a while back, and she gave a really good example of how you can recognize if something is an intuitive lead or if it's like a thought or idea based off of fear. Mm -hmm. You write down, let's say you have an intuitive lead potentially to, you know, start a new job or stay in your current company. Calm yourself down, relax your mind and write it out. Like write that you're getting a new job or you're looking for a new job or you're staying at a new company. 100% of the time, you'll get a feeling when you write the first and the second one, a good feeling or or not so good feeling. So follow the good feeling, you know? And yeah, I would say like definitely all of the decisions that I've made in the last three years have been based off my intuition. And the more you follow it, the more you'll recognize it. The key though is to just do it right away because your reasoning mind will prevent you from doing it because it tries to keep you safe, right? Yeah. So if you get an intuitive lead to do something, most of the time, it's something very scary that makes no sense, zero, little to no sense. So I'll give you an example, like two, almost three years ago now, um, we had just moved into our new home, my husband and I, um, and about four hours, oh, not four hours, sorry, four months later, I was like, I think we should sell this house. <laughs> And 
build a new lifestyle where we can, you know, spend more time with my family in Eastern Europe, spend more time somewhere warm in the winter. We should start our own business. And my husband was like, what are you on right now? Like what's happening? <laughs> we just, we just moved in here. Like what's wrong? And I'm like, no, I just have a hunch, you know? And we did it. And we, thankfully my husband, you know, is pretty open to new ideas and it, it wasn't like, you know, let's quit everything we're doing. It's like, let's just restructure our life. Let's, let's re rearrange some things. Revamp. <laughs> Revamp. But it made no sense. You know what I mean? In that moment, it made zero sense to do that. We had just moved into our home. We had, you know, stable jobs, stable income. Why would we do that? But it was just an intuitive lead. It was a hunch and I followed it and it, ended up being a great thing in the end. So not to say, you know, whoever's listening to this, sell your house, quit your job, like, you know, <laughs> think about it. <laughs> it's just that in that moment, that was that was what I had the intuitive lead to do. And I acted on it right away because the reasoning mind would have said, no, 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 stay in the home, continue mm. to work at your current job, you know, keep yourself safe. Yeah. 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 No, I love that. What I've found actually is if you don't act on that impulse, right, you don't act on that intuitive hit, it, it may go away. But for me, it's always come back in, in maybe it's been dressed in a different way. Like if I don't act on it straight away, which I haven't done a lot in the past, sometimes you want to think about it because I absolutely agree. It's, it's often something random and you're like, like same with me. I was like a full-time lawyer and I wanted to start a wellness podcast. I was like, that's not in my job title, you know, like it doesn't make sense. Um, I, who's going to listen to me type thing. And then it also does scare you. Like I think those are very two telling um, features of when you're getting an intuitive hit. But for me, I've found when I ignore it, it gets louder and it will get louder to a point where it's like, it kind of like ramps you up. I don't know if that's like, cause I was really meant to do this thing or not. I don't know if you've had that experience, but I find, yeah, the intuition, it's, it's, it's a persistent thing, which I'm not mad about, but you do, you learn yeah. to, uh, you learn to hear it and you learn to connect with it. I think as women, it may be a little bit easier because we are a little bit more in touch with our emotions. I think just biologically, and that's just like my experience speaking to my fiance and other, other men in my life, uh, that friends, I don't mean that as like, I have all these men in my life, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, I, I think, you know what I mean? Like, I think it's, uh, something we always have, but just need to opt to tune into. Um, one last thing I want to ask you about before I let you go is in the realm of success. Now the concept of success is something that means something very different to very different people. So I just want to know what does success feel like for you right now? Success for me right now feels like inspiring, entertaining, empowering, and just leaving like a positive impact on people, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, for sure. Like I feel, I feel very good about, you know, my podcast delivering value. Um, my content, you know, like when you, you mentioned to me, I, I'm very entertained by your content. I'm like, yay, that's awesome. You know, I'm so happy that you are. That's that's the goal. So I think for me right now, that's that's something that really drives me is when I know that whatever it is that I'm doing is leaving a good impact on people. Also, I will throw it into the category of success, um, freedom to do whatever I am called to do or whatever I want to do. So just, you know, for, for me right now, freedom to travel, freedom to spend time with my family, uh, prolonged periods of time, because for the first, you know, like eight and a half years of me living in Canada, I spent like a total of maybe, I don't know, five or six weeks with them, not even. And that really wow. bothered me. And I didn't feel like I was successful because I was like, I'm, you know, my parents are getting older and I have a nephew now. And it just felt like I was really not even though I was, you know, I had a successful job, I had all the material successes that you can think of. It didn't feel right that I can't spend time with my family. So right now to me, it's, you know, freedom to spend time with my family, freedom to travel, to go places that I want to go to, um, you know, leave Canada for winter <laughs> because it's so <laughs> cold here. I've said that like 300 times probably on my social media in the last, I've been here <laughs> for three days so far and I'm like, ah, <laughs> I need to stop complaining, but not that I'm complaining. <laughs> But yeah, just freedom to do the things that I want to do, that I'm called to do. And I mean, money is also part of it just because, again, money gives you the freedom sure. to do the things that you want to do. So that's a big part mm -hmm. as well. 
Um, but I do definitely agree that if you start your definition of success with money, you might end up down the wrong path. Like I've learned that Mm -hmm. in the last, you know, five to seven years, you'll do okay. But I feel like in the end, you're going to keep longing for something else, you know, so money is important, but it's not what should drive you to start things, if that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Well, well, money is always a a symbol for something else, right? It's, it's a, it's energy at the end of the day. It's either going to give you, uh, you know, it's a value transfer for something that you want or for your time. Uh, so ultimately it always means something else. So I agree. I think if you focus just on money, notwithstanding it can form a part of your definition of success, it kind of keeps you at the surface level where you never connect and, and go that little bit deeper. But I'll tell you why I asked you that. And, and I often ask guests, you know, randomly that question. Because for me, if you can identify what success looks and feels like to you right now in this moment, noting that it changes from time to time in your life too, it helps you identify what your priorities should be to get that. And in turn, then helps you connect with what your sense of balance should be. So it's almost like this three-tiered approach where if you start with what you want your life to look like, you can then work out the priorities to get yourself there you know, to have time where you can choose and dictate, be the complete author of your time and space, do what you want, have that freedom. What do you, what do you need to prioritize to get there? And therefore, what does your life balance need to look like in order to sustain or fuel a life that's going to, that's going to get there? So, I mean, we could probably chat on for, for days together, uh, but I, but I won't keep you much longer. Maybe I'll get you on for a part two in the future, but it really has been lovely chatting to you and in getting to know the comedian on the gram. It really has been a pleasure. Um, I love what you're doing. You're definitely entertaining and inspiring. So keep it up. And I'm really looking forward to seeing, I guess, where the podcast takes you on your journey um, and, and whatever else is in store for you in the future too. Thank you so much, Erica. I really appreciate you saying that. And it was so, so nice to to be on your podcast. I'm, I'm really, really happy that you invited me. This was an absolute pleasure. And Likewise, you're, you know, you're a great host and this podcast is obviously doing really well. And, you know, I wish for you to um, continue to do, to do well. Yeah. Cause I think, I think it's also a great idea of the balance theory. I was like, this is something that everybody struggles with. And I feel like it's so important to, you know, find, yeah, like you were saying, find what success means for people, what, what all of these different areas that we struggle with, or we um, can't sometimes identify there's like stuff flying around me sorry um (laughs) (laughs) what what are other people doing in those areas right what are they how are they doing it so yeah I like that that's it thank Thank you you. I'm gonna have to have you on my podcast um, too I yeah I'd love to come on and and actually dissect the theory a little more um that would be awesome but for the listeners who want to connect with you a little bit further where's the best place I mean I'm definitely going to be putting links to your Instagram because that's where I like to hang out and catch you regularly um but but where else can they find you or is that the best place and I'll pop links in the show notes absolutely yeah I would say Instagram is uh, my main platform so you can find me there um Christina Cataman my name is spelt without an h but with a C to confuse things a little bit, C-R-I-S-T-I-N-A-C-A-T-A-M-A-N. Uh, my Catamania show also has its own page as a very recent, so you can search it, Catamania. And I also have a TikTok, same thing, Christina Cataman. And uh, Catamania has its own YouTube channel also as a recent, also just called Catamania. Perfect. So whichever well, we'll whichever way you choose to type it. <laughs> Awesome. I'm going to put links to all of that below. Thank you again for your time. And I look forward to watching and uh, keep on being entertained by you on the site. Thanks so much, Erica. I appreciate it.